In this morning's Health Watch, new hope for patients with terminal brain cancer. Thousands of Americans die from it every year. Here with news of a promising new technique to fight the disease is our Dr. Jennifer Ashton. Good morning. Good morning to you, Harry. We went to Pittsburgh for a first-hand look at an experimental procedure that could become a breakthrough in the treatment of brain cancer. John and Betty Volna are in the fight of their lives. I love you. Last October, John was working in the yard when he began feeling lightheaded and passed out. Suffering a severe seizure, he was rushed to a local hospital. They told me I was out for about an hour and a half. After performing an MRI, doctors diagnosed the 55-year-old former insurance salesman with a glioblastoma, a typically inoperable form of deadly brain cancer affecting 10 to 12,000 Americans every year. My attitude was game on. With aggressive treatment, the average life expectancy is only 13 months. And there was times when he had the swelling from the tumor in his brain that uh, he got so weak that he couldn't, he'd fall. After several ineffective rounds of radiation and chemotherapy, neurosurgeons at Allegheny General Hospital in Pittsburgh approach the vulnas with a new type of operation. It specifically targets the tumors and removes them with minimal risk to sensitive parts of the brain that control memory and speech. It's kind of like that miracle that we've been praying for. Patients are given an oral medication that highlights affected areas when illuminated with ultraviolet light, enabling surgeons to more effectively remove cancer cells undetected by MRIs. What we're trying to do is to change his outlook. Dr. Matthew Quigley is director of neurosurgical oncology at Allegheny General. It turns out that the stuff that looks perfectly normal under the surgical microscope, a lot of it is tumor. We didn't know that until we had the drug. After the four-hour procedure, doctors are cautiously optimistic. We did prolong the operation, but we also took out probably another 20, 30 percent of the tumor. I'm hoping I'm buying them an extra five months. Don't run to the ball, Sierra. Precious time to spend coaching his granddaughter's soccer team and with his beloved wife of 32 years, Betty. I just felt like this was God saying, this is your miracle. As long as I'm breathing and fighting, I got the chance to beat this thing. You know, life is not measured by the number of breaths you take, but by the number of times your breath is taken away. Now, John is doing very well following the operation. There was some swelling, but doctors are confident they removed as much of that tumor as possible, Harry. So interesting to see. So the color literally changes in the brain, so when the surgeon is in there, That's right. he sees what's really tumor instead of what he just thinks is tumor. Exactly. It looks red under the UV light. And mm -hmm. what's important to remember is that when a surgeon is doing a cancer operation, there's two concerns. You want to get as much of the cancer and tumor out, right. but you also don't want to remove healthy tissue. Exactly. And when you're talking about glioblastomas, that can be very difficult because this tumor invades the brain tissue in a way that makes it very difficult for neurosurgeons. Who can get an operation like this? Well, right now, again, it's just for patients with glioblastoma, a specific type of brain cancer, mm -hmm. and it's only being done at four hospitals mm -hmm. in the U.S. We'll put that on the website. And it, the hope is, is that in the neurosurgical community that this procedure might gain further support and eventually become FDA approved, but we're a long ways from that. Wow, very interesting stuff.